Hi everyone, this is Lisa Marie from Artistry by Lisa Marie. Welcome to the studio. Today I am going to do some background work on this coloring page. I already did a little bit of prep. Uh, so I took the blue painter tape that I often use to, you know, affix my coloring pages down. Uh, and I put a little bit on some of the uh, parts of this ballerina. Um, just because the nature of the background, I don't want it to come in too much onto her. Um, so I just sort of did a little proactive safety work there <laughs> with some tape. And I have my Distress ink. And I'm going to get it on here real quick. And I'm... You can get a uh, Distress ink... Um, doppers and stuff online, but I just use eyeshadow markers for, or applicators for everything because <laughs> I can buy them in bulk. <laughs> and also, um, you know, they're very sensitive or gentle. Um, so any sensitive surface that I'm working with or any sensitive, you know, medium that I'm working with, I know that the eyeshadow applicator will be gentle enough. So I'm just going to quickly start applying the ink in dabs and I want the texture also I want the texture I want the the bumpiness of the color uh, that's one thing I, I like texture I like bumpy backgrounds with lots of movement in them visually I think it's aesthetically, visually more interesting. The smooth is nice, but I, I really like a lot of texture. Gonna get a little more pigment or coloring around the edges. And then as I get closer to this central image, I'm gonna let the color fade. That's another thing with the eyeshadow applicator. I have a lot of control uh, over the color, control over where the color goes, how much color I put down with that. So it's nice, especially with all these little nooks and crannies in this particular design. I did another video um, recently showing uh, doing this type of background, but the the way I set up the camera, the whole video <laughs> shook every time I dabbed, and I, I was getting so frustrated because I was worried someone was going to get motion sickness watching the video. So hopefully this camera setup is a little less shaky and won't give anyone motion sickness while I'm doing this. No one complained though, I noticed when people were watching the video, uh, no one said in their comments that I was giving them motion sickness, so that's good. I'll take that as a win. I'm just fading as I get closer. To this central image. But getting lots of rich dark coloring around the edge. Uh, the paper that I'm using today is um, a heavier paper. Uh, just because of all the stuff I'm going to be doing with this image, I often use heavier paper. Um, I'll put the link in the video description for you, but it's um, Nina Vellum. That's the, the name of the paper. Whenever I'm doing stuff with ink or markers, um, I like to make sure that my paper can, you know, hold up 
to all the different stuff that I'm going to do. Thin paper um, is really great for lots of different craft projects, but uh, just I've noticed for, you know, the amount of coloring that I do on a particular piece of paper, I need some thicker paper that can survive me. <laughs> Right now I'm just blocking out the blue where that's going to be going here. It looks so weird having her <laughs> taped off like this, but the tape will come off in a minute. And there's actually, so I put the tape down. Um, I don't press too hard. So the tape doesn't really, you know, really get stuck on the paper. And also, um, I actually put the tape on my shirt first or a pant leg or something. So it actually picks up some of the fibers from my clothing and that helps make the tape even less sticky. Uh, and then I'll pull it up off of my, you know, my pant leg usually is what I do because I'm sitting at my studio desk. Um, so I'll pull it up off my pant leg and put it right on the paper that way. And uh, it just helps make sure the tape isn't too sticky when I'm doing stuff like this. Because when I pull the tape up, obviously I don't want to, I don't want to tear the paper. trying to get this and then it faded as it gets closer to her I also like backgrounds that don't require too much precision because I find it very relaxing I can just you know get in the coloring mode and I don't have to worry too much about precision I will later on when I get into some of these other parts, I'll have to be a lot more precise, but for here and now, I can just have fun. And one more section of blue. Yeah, here. I chose um, blue as almost the anchor color and then two other um, colors that would go around it and blend well with it. Uh, so purple and green, you know, because blue helps make those colors so they blend well with blue. And if you're ever wondering um, what colors will blend well with a certain color, just look at a color wheel and whatever colors are right next to it on the color wheel, those are the colors that will blend well with it. Blue and red make purple. Blue and yellow make green. going fade it as it gets closer to the center there let me do a little more down here I like that the application for this is super easy too. You know, it's just dabbing. And 
And I like that I have a mole stick to support my hand while I'm dabbing. This is my mole stick, by the way. <laughs> They've been around for... I, I can't remember if it's since the 16th or 17th century, but a long time. Artists have been using them to support their hands and wrists while they work. It's just a stick with a soft ball at the end. Um, used to be a ball of uh, just cloth or material wrapped around. This one is, uh, there's a little bit of cotton in the middle there and then material wrapped around it. You can buy them um, online. This one's homemade, went to Home Depot, got a little piece of wood. And, you know, Joanne Fabrics, cloth. I know, it's not that fancy, but uh, DIY. Do it yourself. Super duper easy, too. Um, if you like, I'll actually, I'll, uh, I'll put the link to, you know, where you can actually get a mole stick in the video description. That's probably a good idea, huh? That way, if you don't have time, I'll show you where you can just get one. Let's see, I think I need this guy to just a little bit more. Ooze out a little bit on one side and ooze out a little bit on the other side. I was playing with um, slime with one of my, my boys the other day and I taught him the word ooze so now the word ooze is very prevalent in my mind at the moment <laughs> I like teaching them fun new words and when you're playing with slime, uh, there's lots of fun words <laughs> that are options there. Okay, so we have our blue. Ta -da! Get that out of the way. And my doohick there can go out of the way. Next, let's do some green. See, I just, I lined them up for myself. So I didn't even have to think about that today. Can I? All right, get the green going. And I'm going to be uh, misting this um, in a few minutes. So that's another reason why I don't really worry too much right now about uh, precision, because I'm going to be spraying it with water and that just makes it sort of all blend and run all over the place anyway. This is her arm. <laughs> I know, it looks so silly with that tape there. Um, I'll take the tape off in a minute. Just gotta get all this color around it first. And the tape keeps her, uh, you know, the arm and everything safe, not just from the color, you know, as I'm doing all the dabbing, but mostly it's, um, so when I do that misting, um, I don't get that completely covered in, in water. because I am doing a different medium on the uh, grayscale skin. I'll be doing colored pencil. 
This is a multimedia project. And you can start to see uh, a bit how the green and blue are blending together here. Again, I don't need precision. I'm going to be spraying it with water in a minute. Uh, so there's one of the greens. And actually, I'm also going to get right in here with this. Again, this is when I like to have a bit more control with the eyeshadow applicator. Um, I can get right in these little nooks and crannies and curves and I don't have to worry too much about overlapping. Get right in here. Doop, 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 doop. And in our armpit. I'm just going to let that fade away to white. Then balance it out with green on the other side. I need a different chair. This chair is super creaky. I don't know if you guys can hear it. Like anytime I shift around at all, this, this chair goes, it's a little distracting. Um, didn't realize I, I grabbed a creaky <laughs> chair. <laughs> but there are way worse noises chairs can make. You ever have one of those chairs that makes that, makes one of those like, you know, rude noises? Usually it's a leather chair. <laughs> it sounds like you have gas whenever you move in it. Just letting that ooze over to the blue. I actually buy a lot of um, eyeshadow applicators and makeup applicators just in bulk. Super affordable and very, very convenient when um, doing stuff like this. Different color or paint applications or working on different textures. So I don't have to worry about tearing paper or, you know, destroying my budget. Very convenient. Look at that green blending with the blue. Nice.
I don't know what the weather's like where you are today, but uh, here it is a gray day, and I'm kind of bummed. Uh, my kids are, you know, off playing right now um, with their play groups, which is why I'm able to do this. But I was hoping to take them outside a little bit later. We're in upstate New York, and the weather is uh, fickle. <laughs> so... Whenever I get a chance to take them outside to play, you know, I take it, but not if it's going to be a gray, muddy day. One of my boys loves the mud. The other one, not so much. Same with sand. Mud and sand. All right, let's get a little blending between these two colors. Just to make it a little more fun and interesting. And then up here. All right, that one I wanted to do a little more here as well. Again, balancing a little bit. Actually, might grab some of that blue and get a little more blue or a little blue in this part too. Might be fun. Sometimes I do backgrounds last, but just the nature of this um, project, I'm doing the background first this time. work. Mm -hmm. Do a little bit right there. I love drawing dancers, love coloring dancers. You know, the way they move, they're graceful, they're, you know, fun. And that's common. Um, throughout history, actually, artists have always loved drawing dancers. <laughs> And yes, I often reference art history <laughs> as I go, as I color. I studied art history a lot. Um, I actually have a master's in it, but uh, I love looking at, you know, past painters and sculptors and you know, learning their techniques and seeing how they did stuff with color. there to blend with that green. And go over 
right here with a little bit of blue. Originally, I was thinking of just leaving this whole inner circle white, you know, a big, nice pop of uh, pristine white. Um, but it, I, th I think it would have been a little too jarring. Um, this helps unify the colors a little bit more, unify the outer and inner parts of the circle a little bit more. I was looking at this image a lot last night, trying to plan out my colors, figure the uh, color palette. There we go. We're gonna get right in there. That curve of the neck is really pretty. All right, now we can move on to the last color, purple, and my creaky chair. <laughs> Didn't used to creak this much. I don't know what's going on with my chair. Okay, so let's just start getting this in, filling in. Our space with lots of color. And blending. It's just there. I want to get, I don't know, this a little bit darker. I really want it to fill in this corner. The darker um, something is, the heavier it is so especially since it's at the bottom um of this image i kind of want this corner to be a little bit heavier and darker to help sort of weigh down this bottom part And also, I'm trying to cover my logo a little bit. <laughs> All right. That's nice and dark. Blend with that blue. And here you can actually already start to see. So the blue blending with the green and then the blue blending with the purple. So it's a good um, anchor color for this color palette. Anchor meaning, you know, central. It's a central color being used throughout the color palette. Okay. 
And then we can start to fade to light her. I remember I'm going to be uh, spritzing all this with water in a minute. So I don't have to worry too much about precision because water doesn't care too much about precision. It's actually a really fun um, part of doing this is that uh, unknown element. So, you know, I do the best I can, you know, blending my colors, picking the palette, um, controlling how much ink goes from the edges, you know, towards the center here. But, you know, there's a point where you, I have to let go of some of that control just because color or water is going to do its own thing with the color. Water does whatever it wants. It goes where it wants. It's exciting, scary, whatever you want to call it. It's, you know, just the nature of doing it this way. Fading it out. And then balance it. So purple here, so purple up here. And mull stick here. <laughs> it is super helpful having something to support my arm while I'm doing this. I try, um, emphasis on the word try, to uh, work out regularly, you know, stay healthy. And, uh, yesterday did some arm workouts <laughs> so today my arms are a little tired but i've noticed um after having two kids especially with two small ch children um i feel better when i work out regularly and it keeps my energy up so I can keep up with them. <laughs> they are very active little boys. The only drawback is my arms get very tired the next day. Lifting those dumbbells. But good old mall stick is here to help. Thank you, mall stick. All right, gonna fade this a little bit outward. Ooh, look at that fun texture going on there. Nice. I shouldn't admire it too much or get too attached to it since I'm gonna spray it with water. And then it can change completely. So down here, um, I made the purple a lot heavier, again, because it's the bottom. The more color, the more heavy or weighted it'll feel. Up here, um, it's the top of the composition. So I'm not going to make it as dark. I'm going to let it fade away a little bit faster. Getting my bit of color there. And then... We're going to go in here a little bit. 
uh, and right here very gently and carefully because that's a tight space right there I'll do a little bit along her arm up that beautiful neck kind of makes me think of a swan doesn't it um okay there not touching that green we'll go over here it's gonna follow the curve of her uh Outfit, gown, dress. What do you call it? Oh no, my brain stopped working. I can't think of words. Tutu? blend it with the blue. Okay, hopefully you can see in the video now how um, the blue is blending with the green and the purple, you know, in its own way with each color. And I'm just gonna run that out a bit. All right. Well, that was fun. Okay. <laughs> so that's the color application part. Get you over there. Um, in case anyone's wondering why this is here. Plop. I know. It's super precise science. <laughs> and then I have this spritzer here make sure um it is a very gentle uh spritzer cap um this is actually to my kid's uh hair detangler that i bought for him ran out a long time ago filled it with water and now i just use it for this because again i'm a mom on a budget um so keep it fairly uh distant from this because i don't want to soak the paper i just want to miss the paper and have this here Move this here, over here now, and then we do this, not enough, it's one thing with a mister, being so gentle, sometimes it doesn't really do much. There we go. And I'm going to tap it a bit just because I don't want it um, even. <laughs> I want everything to be uneven. I want lots of fun different texture. I want stuff oozing. Um, you can kind of see how it's getting a little shiny down there. Down here. Yeah, look at that nice pool of water. Okay. I really want to make sure... I'm very hands-on. Uh, I really want to make sure... That the whole thing oozes. Oozes. <laughs> it is my word of the day. Um, and the colors, I'll act a little fun. And we're going to have to let that dry uh, for a bit. Um, for this part, the central part, 
I'm actually going to spritz here. You can't see it at all, but I just have to spritz my finger. So larger dots of color. Um, cause I don't want to spray where I'm going to be coloring with pencil. I don't want to mess with that too much, that paper. So a little more control over these tighter areas. But I still can't totally control it because it's water. And water will do whatever it wants. Uh, here. And as I get closer to the parts that, you know, I let stay um, white, I'm just going to dab a little more gently. And hardly at all there because I really don't want to get it all over her. I want to be able to do lots of colored pencil stuff there. Get into her armpit, that would be good. All right. What do we think? Anywhere else that needs... I really want you to get more texture. Thank you. That is the other thing. I will just force water sometimes <laughs> to go crazy for me. Um, all right. We have to let this dry now because that's a lot of water. And it's really difficult to work on paper that's full of water. Okay. So... What I'm going to do next is pull up this tape. I'm drying my hand right now because <laughs> it's kind of damp. All right. So remember I said uh, I didn't press down too hard, which is nice because that means I can peel it like this. Got that one. Peel down here. That one. There. And then mole stick. So supportive. Ta da! So this tape, um, it's just blue painter's tape. Uh, remember, just put it on a piece of clothing like your shirt or your pant leg for a second and then pull it up and then you can put it on the paper and it won't be as sticky so you don't have to worry about it tearing the image or the paper uh, when you pull it up and that's it for today because we need to wait for water to dry uh thank you so much for joining me in the studio today uh, I hope you had a lot of fun while we played with color and water. Remember to subscribe to my channel so you don't miss the next video and stay creative. Bye!